Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. This is episode 21 of Learn Lightroom 6, Lightroom CC. In this episode, I'm going to show you my workflow on creating a panorama in Lightroom. Now, I do use a couple plugins. I use Topaz Denoise to reduce noise, and I use On One Photo 10 effects to bring back some detail. Recently, I was in Philadelphia and I was in Independence Hall and I took some shots in the room where the um, U.S. Constitution was ratified and before that, the Declaration of Independence was signed. And I created a panorama and I posted it to my personal Facebook page and I received a ton of comments on these, the, the, that image. Uh, people were asking me questions about, you know, how I controlled noise and you know, how specific things and what I did. And someone made the suggestion that I should do a video on my workflow for this type of image. So that's why I'm doing this video. Now, let me stay right at the top here that I don't make any claims that this is the best and only way you should do a panorama. This is merely the way I do it and it works for me. Now it is a multi-step process. I do use a couple plugins, so it may or may not work for you. Now, those of you that shoot panoramas know that it's best practice to try to be in the middle of your subject or the middle of your scene and shoot it, you know, left to right or right to left or whatever. In this case, it's just impossible to do that. When you go on a tour of Independence Hall, you're with a large group of people, you're shoulder to shoulder, front to back. Uh, I really couldn't move. Um, the first shot, you know, I just was at the far right of the room. I took a shot, then I, you know, moved my camera to the right a little, handheld, took a shot, couldn't use a tripod. Went, moved my camera to the right a little more, took a shot, this one's crooked. Uh, not that great of a shot, or series of shots. but you'll see that we can create a pretty nice panorama with the tools I mentioned. Now, the first thing I do is when I look at the images for a panorama, is I look at the exposure for all the shots. And as I see with this shot here, the image itself looks considerably darker than that shot there. And that one just maybe is a little bit darker. So what I do first is I match total exposures and the way you do that is you click first on the image that you think has the correct exposure in my case I believe it's this image then I will hold the command key in because I have a Mac if you have a PC it's the control key in and I'll click on the next uh, images the other two images in this case so all three are selected when I'm in the develop module I would go up to settings down to match total exposures now, what Lightroom does, it just adjusts the exposure slider on the images. You could see on this one, it added a full stop of exposure to that one. So it matched the exposure of this image, which I thought was properly exposed. So it didn't do anything to the exposure slider on that image. On this last image, it added 0.39 stops of exposure. So now the exposure is matched. Now, the next thing I look for is some problem areas that I really have to take care of in the raw file. In this case, it's these windows. You can see that you really can't see outside. It's all blown out. Now, if I create the panorama, it does create a DNG file, but then I do use denoise to get rid of the noise. It's going to be more difficult to get any detail out of this uh, these windows. So I'd rather do it right now early in the processing. So all I'm going to do is go to highlights and pull that highlight slider all the way down. You can see now we got detail. So I'm going to do that to all three. Now you could sync it, you know, but it's just, there's only three images, so it's no big deal. So we turned highlights all the way down. Now our windows look pretty good. Now, a lot of times I will deal with um, white balance right now with the raw files, but these don't look too bad. Um, I mean, they look all right. Maybe when I'm done, I might change my mind, and I could work with white balance later. It's better to work with white balance, though, with the raw file because there's more data there to work with, but I'm just, for the sake of time right now, I'm just going to leave it as is. So I'm ready now to process these for noise. Now, I mentioned I use Topaz Denoise. 
uh, to get rid of noise. And you can use it as a batch program, meaning I could send all three of these into Topaz Denoise and do them in a batch. You'd have to use Topaz Denoise as a standalone program. You can't use it as a plugin in Lightroom to do that. But I don't like doing that. Because this first image was considerably darker than the other two, this first one is definitely going to have more noise in it than, say, this one, which was more properly exposed. So I don't want to process these into noise the exact same way. I want to process them individually and get rid of the noise uh, as much as possible um, so that it looks uniform throughout the panorama when we're done. So I'm going to send them over individual. It's going to take a lot of time. But I'm going to do this one first. I'm just going to right click on it. I'm going to go down to Edit In and then down to Topaz Denoise 6. Now it's going to create a copy with Lightroom adjustments with these defaults that I put in. I've talked about my defaults ad nauseum, why I do this. You could check previous videos. I'm not going to go into detail now why I use those defaults. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to process this first image into noise. Then I'm going to pause the video and do the other two so you don't have to sit through all that. But I'm just going to show you how I work into noise. Now I do have a full series of videos on Topaz plugins. You could check that out, including Topaz Denoise. There's a couple videos on Denoise. I also has a, have a full series of videos on On One Photo 10's uh, latest product. You could check those out too. In the description below, there'll be links to there and discount codes so you could save some money if you want to purchase this stuff. Now, what I typically will do is use a preset. These were shot with a Fujifilm X-T1 mirrorless camera. Uh, there is not a preset in Denoise for the X-T1, but there is one for the X100T, and the X100T uses the same exact sensor as the X-T1, so I'm pretty confident that the presets are good enough. So I'm going to use the X100T presets, and what I'll typically do is go to the lowest IS1, ISO preset first and look at it. Obviously, it didn't do anything. Then I'll go to the next highest. In this case, it's 800. Didn't do anything. Go to 1600. Did just a tiny, tiny bit. We're going to go to 3200. Now, a little bit more. Go to 6400. Now, again, this was shot at ISO 5000. All right, now ISO 6400 did a nice job. Now, one thing about getting rid of noise, it's kind of a fine line you walk here. Uh, you want to get rid of the noise, but you don't want to obliterate detail. That's where I like the noise. It does a nice job. And I then like to use On One Photo 10 effects later to bring back some of that detail that I might have lost when I got rid of the noise. So what I do is I, I pick a preset. In this case, for this specific image, it's ISO 6400. But I always go over here to the Detail Recovery tab, and I go to this Add Grain slider, and I bring that down to zero. No matter what preset I use, I bring that slider down to zero. A lot of times, if you add a little grain to a shot, it will give the illusion that the image is sharper than it actually is. I don't want to add any grain at all. I'm kind of known for my images to be very low in noise, but high in detail. That's kind of my style. So on one photo 10, we'll get the detail back. I don't need to add any grain. So I'm bringing that down to zero and I'm going to click OK. Now, while this is processing, I'm going to pause the video. Then we're going to start the video. Well, while it's paused, I'm going to process those other two images so you don't have to sit through all that. And then I'm going to restart the video and we're going to have our three images with out noise and we're going to process from that point forward. Okay, I'm back. I processed all three image in, images in Topaz to noise. The first one again was at the that um, ISO 6400 preset. The next two I did at the ISO 3200 preset and on all three I brought that add grain slider down to zero. So now we got rid of all the noise. So I'm ready to create my panorama. Now one thing I forgot to mention is you notice I didn't do anything in lens corrections to the RAW files. That's because I used a Fujifilm mirrorless camera. If you use most mirrorless cameras, the uh, lens corrections are already built into the RAW file so you don't have to apply them. If you're not using a mirrorless camera, make sure you apply your lens corrections to those RAW files before you send it over to Denoise. All right, so we're going to create our panorama. I'm just going to click on the first one and hold the shift key down and click on the last one. We're going to right click on any of them and we're going to go to Photo Merge Panorama. Now it's going to create a preview and we have 
different projections. And some cases, one projection might work better than another. We're going to auto crop there just to show the, the cropped image. Now, the cylindrical in this case looks pretty good. We're going to go up to the spherical and look at that and see what that looks like. Typically, one will have a little more real estate than another. And it looks like cylindrical has a little more, meaning it just is a little, little taller when I click on cylindrical. And that's what we're looking for. We want as much real estate. We want as many pixels as possible. Now, in this case, perspective won't be good at all because I wasn't in the middle. Since I was far off to the right, shooting on a whole thing on an angle, you could see how it really distorted the image. So we're going to go with cylindrical. Now, one of the newer features of the panorama function in Lightroom, it wasn't there when this was first introduced in Lightroom 6, Lightroom CC. It came in one of the later updates is this boundary warp slider. Now if I unclick the auto crop box you could see we have a lot of like dead pixels around the image and, and you get that with a panorama all the time. To minimize that you wouldn't want to shoot the way I did. You would want to be in the middle, you'd want to use a tripod, you'd want to use a special tripod head if possible, a panorama head, and then you would minimize this distortion. Now because I was off to the side I handheld the image you know, and I just kind of quickly shot across, I have a lot of distortion, I have a lot of dead pixels. But if you take this boundary warp slider and I slide it to the right, you're going to see it just kind of fills in the pix pixels. But, warning, as I zoom in, let me bring this down, you can see, let's say, the frame of this window. You can see how the frame is nice and straight. When I bring brown boundary warp to 100, you can see it's nice and distorted now. Now, I posted the image like this on Facebook with the, like, warped edges and the lines weren't really straight, no one even noticed. If you're just posting for Facebook or whatever, trust me, it's people are probably aren't even going to notice. On the other hand, if you're shooting for a real estate company or a hotels, you know, a brochure or website or something like that, you really need your verticals line straight, your horizontal line straight, and your corner square. So you want to stay away from this boundary warp slider. In my case, like I mentioned, I didn't care. I was just posting it to Facebook. I, I'm never going to sell this image professionally. So it's just more for fun. So I really didn't care. I kind of wanted it as much real estate as possible. So that's why I chose to slide that boundary warp slider all the way up. There are going to be some cases where you could slide it up a little and it won't distort. It will distort less and you'd prefer to do that. So I'm just going to leave it all the way at 100 and click Merge. Now, it's going to create our panorama, and then we're going to process it from this point forward a little bit in Lightroom, and then I'm going to send it over into On One Photo Effects 10 for the final um, finishes I do to the image. And again, let me reiterate that this is just the way I do it, all right? I, I really am not making any claim that this is the best way and the only way it should ever be done. This works for me. All right, and take it for what it's worth. Maybe it'll give you some ideas of how you could take maybe something I'm saying and apply it to your workflow, and it will work for you. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to process it as I normally would. Um, now, you guys watch my videos. You know, you know I do things pretty specifically. I use, for instance, the tone curve for contrast instead of the contrast slider. That's just the way I like it. Um, we'll just do some quick whites and blacks adjustment by holding the shift key in as I click on the names, whites and blacks, to adjust those. Um, it looks okay. It looks okay. I mean, it's, you know, if I took my time, I'd probably do it a little better. Now, as I look at it, though, it does look a little warm. And I did mention that I'd prefer to take care of that in um, with the raw files. Uh, but you could do it here. And so I'm going to adjust the white balance. I'm just going to get this eyedropper, and I'm going to click on a neutral color, like right there. That looks a lot better. So, so there. Um, I'm not going to do anything with detail. We're going to use uh, Denoise for the, or I'm sorry, uh, On One Photo 10 Effects to get our detail. Again, you don't have to do anything with lens corrections. If you're using a mirrorless camera, it was always built in, already built in. Now, it looks pretty good, actually. I mean, if you're not into On One Photo 10, you could just maybe add a little vignette. And you're good to go. In my case, I want to send it over to On One Photo 10 effects. 
on one effects 10. We're going to edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. And we're going to click edit. Now I really usually just use on this case a couple filters. Um, one is the dynamic contrast filter that's available in On One Photo 10. It's, it's a great filter. All right, we're going to click Normal Photo. And did it do, okay, we see the image there. Uh, once this comes, here we go. We're going to add filter. We're going to add dynamic contrast. Now watch, you're going to see all kinds of detail like up here. All right, that's even a little bit too much. So what, what I typically will do is I'll go to this opacity slider and I put that at around 50 give or take. And that looks pretty good. It looks more natural. The next filter I usually will use is a vignette filter. And I like a specific one. I like this soft one, but sometimes that's a little bit too robust. So I pull the size back a little bit and I click apply. And once that is done in rendering in Lightroom, you could see it did a pretty good job for being, I mean, I broke so many rules. I, I did so many no-nos taking this panorama. As I mentioned, I wasn't in the middle. I handheld it. I quickly went across. My exposures weren't equal, um, but it came out pretty darn good. It came out pretty darn good. You could see um, there's no noise, lots of detail. Um, I shot it, all three shots were at ISO 5000. So that's the way I do it. Um, again, and we have some detail out the windows also. It wasn't all blown out out there. So that's the way I do it. I hope that helps you. I hope that gives you some ideas on how you could even process a single image. Uh, maybe that will help you do that. All right, that's it. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.